Okay, starting here on chapter one. Uh, chapter one's on linear, quadratic, and other relations. And uh, the first section's on graph and linear models. And hopefully this will be a review for most people that had Math 90 or Algebra 1. And uh, on this introduction problem, it gives you how uh, smallpox was uh, eradicated. And it gives you some data here. And um, then finally, at the end of the page, it gives you a linear equation for the number of people that had smallpox at any given year. And T uh, is usually our independent variable, our variable that's playing the role of X, and the variable that's on the other side is usually playing the role of Y. But T, if you see an equation that has any letter and T, then T is definitely playing the role of X as your horizontal axis. Now, T on this stands for number of years, uh, as in time, after 1950. So on this particular problem, it says um, uh, how many people, according to this model right here, how many people had smallpox in 1950 and 1967, and then also when will smallpox be eradicated? Well, to find out, uh, according to this model, how many people had smallpox in 1950, well, 1950, uh, well, T is the number of years after 1950. So we could say T equals zero is 1950. That's the starting date. So if we put zero in for T, we would get negative 2.06 times zero, which is zero, plus 50 is 50. So it would be 50, but look, when we read the problem, it says N is the number of cases of smallpox in units of millions. So back in 1950, there was approximately 50 million uh, people that had smallpox, and uh, that's pretty close to accurate. Um, now, in 1967, well, that's six, 17 years after 1950, so we'd have to put 17 in for T, so we'd have to take negative 2.06 times 17 and then add on 50. And if you do that, I think we uh, have that here, you'd end up with 14.98. Uh, so it would be 14.98 million people had smallpox in 1967, according to this model. So it was going down, and the plan was to eradicate uh, smallpox, and it was. And um, if we want to use this model to predict when smallpox would be eradicated, well, it means that nobody in the world has smallpox. So we put put zero in for n. Now, if we put zero in for n, we have zero equals negative 2.06t plus 50. And then solving this equation, I would take the negative 2.06 to the other side. That would change the sign. I get 2.06t equals 50. Or you can think of it as adding 2.06t to both sides. Then the last step, divide both sides by the 2.06, and you'll get uh, 24.27. Now, that means 24.27 years after 1950, which would be about the year 1974 or 1974.27, uh, that's when this model predicted that uh, uh, smallpox would be eradicated. It was actually eradicated in 1977, so this model does do a really good job. Now, in this problem, it gives you the years uh, for the Indianapolis 500 with the winning times. Like, for example, back in 1920, uh, that was pretty much the first Indianapolis 500. The winning time was actually 338. In 1930, it was 298. 1940, 262. In 1950, it was rained out and so on. Now, we think of years or time as being the x-axis. And then this variable right here is your dependent variable. And your winning times then would be the y-axis going vertically. And time would be your x-axis or independent variable going horizontal. So this is your independent variable acting like x going horizontal, and this is your dependent variable going uh, vertically like your y-axis. Okay, so that's what this talks about here, dependent variable and independent variable. And what we do a lot of times, like we did in the last problem, was we say instead of you know putting in years like 1920, 1930, we'll call 1920 the base year. So 1920 is t equals 0. So that would make 1920 0, 1930 is 10, and so on like that. So we would really have points like this. Now, you can plot points on, a, uh, on, on the Excel sheet by, uh, let me go ahead and get these points. And I'll go to the linear sheet. So here I am on the 102N sheet, and I'm going to paste special these values in here. And when I do that, that will graph those data points, as you can see over here, but it also graphs the line. Now, if you don't want the line in there, which we don't at this point, then I can just delete the line. Let me go ahead and delete that. And now what we see is the data points plotted. So here's your x-axis here. And 
at zero, it's up here to 300 and something. At uh, 10, it's up to about 300 and so on. So these are the data points plotted. And you can see that there. Now, if you want to get the line that best fits those data points, which we will in the next section, if you want to do that now, all you have to do is click Get Equation from Data Points. And what it will do is it will get the equation that best fits those data points and draw that equation right there. So that equation of the line that best fits those data points is y equals negative 2.298x plus 321.51. Now the y is playing the role of the winning times of the Indianapolis 500 and the x is playing the role of time. So uh, that's probably more than what we needed to do there. And then back to graphing lines, you can graph lines uh, by uh, at least three different ways. You can graph them on Excel for one one way, but you can also graph them by uh, uh, plotting points, and that's where you just substitute values in for the independent variable and get values out for the dependent variable. And then once you have two or three points, if it's just a linear equation, which this is, everything's to the first power, then you can just uh, draw the line that goes through those points. Okay, or yeah, that would be drawing the lines through those points. Now this equation right here is actually a little bit different than the one we got because it's rounded. This is negative 2.3t plus 321. So if I want to change this right here, I can. And I can make this, um, I can just start uh, typing right in these cells, which I have a hard time doing while I'm recording. So uh, the A uh, on the equation we were actually given was negative 2.3, that's the slope. And the B, the y-intercept is 321. So that's where this, line here hits the uh, axis is at 321 or the point 0, 0321. That means according to this linear equation that back in 1920, because 1920 is year 0, the winning time was 321. Now the actual winning time was I think 338, but uh, this is what the model predicts. The model predicts it to be a little bit lower than the data point. The model is the line and the data points are the dots here. Uh, the slope is negative 2.3 and that means that According to this linear equation right here, each year the winning time is going to down by 2.3 minutes. And we could see that if we made a chart down here. We can start, let's say, at zero and make the increment one. And we can see that here is what the winning time is predicted to be in 1920. Uh, uh, is 321. 1921, the winning time is predicted to be 318.7. Well, that's 2.3 less than uh, uh, 20, 321. Take 2.3 off of it, you get 318.7. Take 2.3 off of this, you get 316.4, and so on. So each year, the winning time is going down by 2.3 seconds. Now, it really didn't go down by 2.3 seconds each year. You can see that the actual data points uh, went down by different amounts every year or every 10 years is how it shows it here. But uh, according to this model, it's going down by 2.3 minutes every year. Now, the x-intercept is automatically automatically calculate right here, that'd be 139.56 comma zero. Now the 139.56 is your T, that means 139.56 years or 139.57 years after 1920, the winning time is supposed to be zero. Now we can see that if we change the view of this uh, window here, uh, if we change the viewing window of our graph, we can change the x values. If I go out to, well, we see the x intercepts about 139, so if I go out to about 140, I should be able to see that x intercept. And, uh, and I do. So here's the x intercept out here. Now, the x intercept is not within the domain of this model because it doesn't make sense. This means that 139 years after 1920, about the year 2059, people will be finishing the Indianapolis 500 as soon as they start it. Well, that's actually impossible. So uh, that's about everything from, from this. You can see your y-intercept, x-intercept. You can put in x values here to get a y, like if, they wanted, if you wanted to know what's the interpolated. Interpolation means uh, predicting values within the range of your data points. If uh, we put in uh, anything from 0 to 70 in here, it would be interpolation because my data points went from 0 to 70. And uh, if I put anything after 70 in here, that would be extrapolation. But for example, if we wanted to know what the predicted winning time would be in 1950, in which the race was uh, rained out, it would be 252 minutes. Here I can put in a value for y, like if I want to know when will the winning time be 200 minutes, well, according to this model, it's 52.6 minute, 52.6 uh, years after 1920, so around the year 1972.6.